So today I'd like to welcome Ty Spearing from Ultimate Windows. Welcome, Ty. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. So if, maybe if you could just start off by giving us a, a, a brief introduction into your business and what it is that you actually do. Sure. Uh, I own and run a company called Ultimate Windows. We specialise in UPVC double glazed residential windows for homes. Uh, started the business in 2000, well, my father actually started making windows in 2001. I yep. moved up home again in uh, 2005. Uh, before that, in 2003, we were just sort of, uh, we lived about 15 k's out of town. We'd get the capital truck to drive down the 3k driveway, fashioned a little uh, forklift thing off the tractor that we had out there and just made the windows with a drop saw um, at the back of the farm shed there and uh, got a local glazier in to glaze the windows. So that's where it all sort of started off. Right, wow. Um, yeah, and since then uh, we have done commercial windows, aluminium windows, double glaze, and we always wanted to focus on energy efficient windows. So um, yep. we decided sort of uh, 12 odd years ago that we'd really just do double glazing um, well before it was sort of commonplace. And uh, about seven or eight years ago now, about eight years ago now, we started to do uh, UPVC windows. So the outer frames PVC, really, really popular product in Europe. It has 70% of the residential windows sold at UPVC. Uh, right. And the same again in North America. Um, but we're just a bit slow to catch on in Australia. Um, and I suppose the real benefit of a PVC window is the bang for buck energy efficiency versus cost. So it's a right. really right. energy efficient window with uh, a lower cost compared to say a thermally broken or a timber window. So uh, yeah, we love the product and starting to expand from there. Fantastic, well done. And what sort of geographic area are you covering? So we only manufacture in Wodonga. Um, so uh, West Wodonga, we've got uh, four, actually four factories in the yard we operate from uh, with how we've grown. So uh, love to consolidate that in the near future into a much bigger factory, but we'll get there. Um, so all our manufacturing is Wodonga. Uh, we have uh, install sales staff based in Wodonga as well. And we also have uh, install, install and sales staff and a showroom in Melbourne and also in Canberra. Right, okay. So. And then what sort of what geographic area do, do your customers come from? What, what's the area that you actually service? Sure. Well, we cover uh, most of um, Victoria. So uh, over the far west, we don't do too many jobs, but uh, sort of central to uh, all of East Victoria, um, New South Wales up to Sydney, uh, and certainly a lot in the ACT as well. Uh, we do do some um, very specific uh, doors. They're called a magna line door, which is a little bit different to a bifold door, and we're the only manufacturers of those in Australia. So we have sold uh, sent those all over Australia as well. Fantastic! Wow. So um, you've mentioned. So you've been in business since two thousand and five. Did I get that yes. correct? We yep. started the business in two thousand and five. Yep. Yep. So um, tell us about your journey since that time. What, what's been some of the, I, I guess, the key elements that, that you could recall that, hey, really helped you along that journey? Sure. Uh, well, yeah, it was certainly up and down. Um, GFC, that sort of thing, not long after we started. So uh, <laughs> certainly had some real difficult times um, at the at beginning there. And then when you've got a small business and you're just starting out, it's always a, a battle. Uh, a big thing for us was very early days, I think 2008, 2009, we uh, put up a display at the Home Ideas Centre up in Canberra. Um, mm -hmm. because, uh, we were manufacturing a thermally broken aluminium system, which really good quality system, but it was very pricey. So uh, the options uh, around Aubrey Wodonga at the time were great. So uh, there weren't anybody manufacturing this style of window in Canberra. So we really pushed up there. Uh, and that opened up a whole new uh, market for us, which was fantastic. Oh. So, yeah, that was a really big, uh, a big push, a big area. So then we started manufacturing just a standard aluminium window system to expand the range. And then we got introduced um, through a reseller up there uh, to manufacture PVC. Um, and I'd spent the best part of 10 years bagging PVC out to anyone who'd listen. And um, she actually said, well, if you can get the machines and you can make it, I can give you work. And I thought, well, you don't turn down work. So uh, looked and found an old secondhand machine down in Tassie 
um, yep. an old welder. And so we brought that up from Tassie and it had sparks and steam and all sorts of stuff flying out of it when we first plugged it in and ended up getting it fixed. It took us about six goes with different sparkies and all the rest of it. But we ended up getting working and the more we manufactured this stuff, the more we realised this is actually really easy to make. It's yeah. really energy efficient. And then going through costing wise, it's just energy ratings are so high compared to the cost compared to your thermally broken mm. aluminium system. So yeah, we manufactured that for another couple of years and that's when we thought, right, oh, we've got to really, if we're going to do something, we've got to do it properly, get rid of this old terrible welder. Um, and then we spent the best part of a million bucks putting in a fully automated line to manufacture the PVC system from start to finish. So uh, we've still got that. We did that about uh, six years ago now. Yep. Uh, put that in. So that's still uh, running strong. And uh, at that stage, we're only manufacturing from the one shed. Um, and we're now, as I said before, we've now got four sheds that we manufacture from. And uh, it's basically just increased our capacity um, and expanded from camp. Uh, basically set up our own um, shop in Canberra and then uh, one down in Melbourne as well. Right. Wow. So what would you say the biggest challenge is that you've had to face um, through that time? Uh, lots of different challenges. Yeah, there were times when we only had three or four staff and uh, the jobs had just dried up. I was having phone calls from um, window companies in Melbourne saying, please, can you take some staff? I don't want to sack them, but we've got no work. And uh, yeah, around that 2010, 2011 um, sort of time frame, where I can still remember some of the jobs where if we didn't get that job, you were just knife edge as whether the business was going to continue on. Um, right. Remember, yeah, just driving up to Canberra, sleeping in the in the van and um, just going around to builders and just harassing them until they give us a job. And finally, there was a few that, yeah, you'd get a few through and, uh, yeah, there's some pretty rough patches over the years, but uh, just got to keep pushing. And um, yeah, it's certainly turned around over the last uh, five or six years. Yeah, so it, it hasn't been all beer and skittles then? Definitely not. No, you don't go in business for 18 years and it's all beer and skittles, that's for sure. You, you don't have hair too often, but um, yeah. So, so, so what did you learn about yourself during those challenging times, Ty? <laughs> Uh, I suppose um, how hard you could push yourself to. So, um, yeah, you really wanted to get the business. My aim for the business was to get it to a point where I could take a step back. And um, that's really only happened in the last sort of 12 months or so that uh, we've got great managers here, great teams in Melbourne and Canberra. So I'm actually not having to get up. I spent the best part of 12 years getting up at 3.30 every day. Um, just so I could get a good block of work in before um, the factory staff come in at seven and uh, yep. you'd go do a delivery and you'd have five change of clothes. But you do your delivery, you go get a fluoro on, you go to someone's house, do some maintenance, you'd go put a shirt on, go visit an architect, go dress down a little bit more, visit a builder, and then you drive home from Canberra after that. And there were sometimes 18 hour days, but you just had to sort of push yep. through and knew that at the end of the day, you were going to get there, you were going to build a business that um, could support itself and sustain itself. And yeah, we got there in the end. Yeah, so I, I, I guess what you're talking about there is, you know, that self-belief, knowing that you could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and really, I suppose you, you've only got the two options. You either do do it or you fall over. So yes. uh, yeah, and I was determined that that wasn't going to ha ha happen. So uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly oh. up and downs, but uh, got there. Oh, look, uh, and, you know, I've heard it many times and I've probably even applied this myself. Failure isn't an option. No. So, okay. What's the biggest challenge that you're actually facing in business right now then? Now, over the last sort of couple of years, certainly since uh, all the lockdowns and everything have happened, has been staffing um, and just uh, attracting staff and attracting good people. Uh, yes. Throughout uh, sort of this time last, not this time last year, probably May last year, uh, we would put an ad on Seek, and normally we'd get sixty applicants, seventy applicants. Um, and May last year, we would have six applicants, and they were just certainly no one you would employ. Um, so uh, it was a really, really hard time. We had a whole heap of people um, having a week off, or what? No, probably a bit longer than that, um, where they had to have their time away and all that sort of stuff with the, the lockdowns and all those sorts of things. So Aaron and I would come in um, on a Saturday, 
for the five or six staff that we had actually working in the factory, we'd have to pick all the material and then load it all back up. And um, just so we could have the staff that did turn up during the week actually get through. So uh, right, yeah, but... our lead times just completely blew out um, during that time, which was really hard. And uh, a lot of builders that we've had and we've sort of worked with for five, six, seven, ten years, they were really frustrated because where we'd say it'd be a four week or a six week lead time, we're out to six months and um, it was just really tough. We didn't know how many staff were actually going to turn up. So we couldn't say, right, oh, yeah, it'll be two months or it'll be six weeks. But, and then knowing full well, it probably is six months. We just, we don't like to lie to the customers. We don't like to sort of just fudge the truth if it's, they, they're going to be cranky with us before or after. We'd prefer them to be cranky with us before. We'll be upfront and just say, this is where we think it is. So that's okay. been a big challenge. A great philosophy. Yeah. Uh, well, we hope so. And yeah, I think I think builders at the end of the day do appreciate it. But yeah, it was certainly a trying time there. But it, it has improved over the last six months. It's uh, started to pick up again. Oh, that's, that, that's great news. Um. <sighs> How do you keep yourself inspired on a daily basis? Daily basis? Uh, I suppose I've always had uh, goals and things that I want to achieve. Um, not so much your two-year, five-year, ten-year plan, all those types of things. So it's more about what I want the business to look like, what I want to um, have in terms of I want to get to the point where we are now where I don't have to get in before seven o'clock. Uh, we have our morning meetings. I can talk to the guys. I can then finish in time to pick the kids up from school and go take them to their sport and all those sorts of things. So that was a real goal for me to get to, to this point. Um, so uh, it's, oh, well, when you've got a business and you've got a lot of staff to keep everyone ticking along, it's not really hard to get motivated, I don't think, Phil. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's just something that uh, constantly evolves and where you want to take the business to the next step too. They're the exciting things and the challenges. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just thinking about that inspiration, the motivation, do you have any favourite uh, quotes or sayings that, that you follow that really inspire you? Um, not so much quotes or sayings individually, but I do, um, the first, one of the first business books I ever did, read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I like to sort of um, go back uh, to that uh, as often as I can um, yes. and just reread and just refresh yourself as to, yeah, why you're doing these things, the things like um, Simon Sinek, start with why, um, those types of things, and even... Um, uh, the Strangest Secret, Earl Nightingale, um, yep. from uh, the 50s or 60s. I try to put that on every month and just, um, it's just a good little, I suppose, reminder, sit in the car, you can listen to it and, okay, yep, I've got to do that and I've got to do that. You can sort of meander off the path a little bit and that sort of centrals, centralising the thinking. What yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. look, it's, it's so important. Yeah. Some of those old books are, are still great books. Yeah. Um, just recently at our global conference in Phuket, one of the coaches was telling us a story about how he's read Think and uh, uh, Think Big and Grow Rich. Yep. Um, I think he said he'd read it 20 times and then somebody who really understands the book said, now, have you really read it properly? Yeah. And which was a bit of an eye opener for him. And he said once, once she taught him what it was that he needed to be uh, taking away from the book, yep. he said he, his world changed. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And yeah, that's another okay. great book that it was one of the first ones I read. And for something that's set so long ago, how it still can be 100% relevant now. Exactly. Uh, apart from a few mentions of uh, resume writing and typewriters and those things, everything <laughs> else, the concepts are just still so relevant. Uh, yeah, the days we love to forget. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you were going to start your business again, Ty, what would you do differently the next time round? Question, great question. Um, I kind of think I took a lot of huge risks when I think back on it, but um, by, in a sense, I could probably have even taken even more. Yep. Um, and got the business to the point where it is now even sooner. So mm -hmm. I suppose, um, yeah, looking at it at the time, you, 
heart's in your mouth, you're sweating and all the rest of the thing. Am I doing the right thing here? Am I doing the right thing here? But really, I suppose, just backing yourself um, every sort of step of the way and just, right, I've got to make this decision. I've got to do it. I've got to get it done. Um, every time we've done that, um, my wife and I, it's, it's worked out. So yes. uh, yeah. just probably, yeah, making those decisions 12 months earlier, two years earlier, those sorts of things. Um, yeah, yeah. Probably, yep. Get to yeah. that. Get there in ten years or twelve years instead of uh, eighteen. Yeah, and having the confidence to actually follow it through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, have you got any other words of wisdom that you'd like to share with anybody that's watching the video? Uh, wisdom. All oh, right. Don't sort of sort of see myself as something like that, but um, really, I suppose, or if you if you're in business and what I've learned and what I sort of touched on. Um, is that no matter how hard it can get, and I know there's a lot of hard times for particularly builders and those types of things at the moment, um, is that it can just be that one job that'll get you through for the next week or the next month or mm. the next however many well, months or whatever it might be. But you know, if you just hustle and hustle and hustle and get past that time, um, that you can build a business into anything down the track. Um, so as you say, there's no choice here you can't fail so you just got to keep on keep on pushing and it'll get through it yeah so so having clarity of your vision because i think you've mentioned that a few times is you know you know where you want to go you know what it is that you want to achieve yep and not losing sight of that thing exactly yep yep fantastic all right thank you so much for your time today ty um, I, I, I wish you well and uh, look forward to catching up again soon. Sounds great. Thanks, Phil. All right. Thanks, Ty. Bye now.